Hi, I'm Carolyn Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and we are on week 12, day 6 of the Spiritual Exercises of Ignatius, and we are, for weeks 12 and 13, going through Jesus' family history. Okay, we are going to have the story of Joseph. And Joseph is a type of Christ, and we'll talk about that afterwards. I don't want this to be a big teaching time, but it's nice to know about types because we're um, talking about the genealogy. And just to let you know where it is in the genealogy, or just we started with Adam, father of all, Adam and Eve, and then Noah and Abraham. And we had that story of Abraham now we're skipping over in our genealogy, but after Abraham was Isaac, and after Isaac was Jacob, and Jacob had Joseph, and Jacob's part of this story of Joseph. So um, I'll just, what, it's, the actual story uh, is from um, Genesis 37 to all the way to 50. So it's a long story, couldn't do it in the, what I try to limit to 30 minutes, but um in my manual, I have you read Genesis 37, 1 through 28, and then skip to Genesis 50 and read 15 through 21. So even that is a lot to read in a 30-minute um, portion. So what I'm going to do is read from the Ladybird Bible. And this is <laughs> a lovely Bible. It's... um. Okay, you, it's Yorkshire, um, God's Story. It's from God's Story, Yorkshire Television. So it's a British, it's, um, I think we bought it in Malaysia, because Malaysia was at one time a, a part of the British, well, it still is part of the British, well, it doesn't matter. But anyway, Ladybird, <laughs> it's Ladybugs, that's what we call it in the United States. So I am going to tell that Genesis, um, or Genesis 37, 1 through 28, and more of a story version from this Bible, and then skip over, but give you little highlights. of. And the story is very familiar to many of us. So let's um, close our eyes and breathe slowly. And recenter our scattered senses on the presence of God. Resting your body and resting your mind, giving over anything that might be distracting you. And then fixing your gaze on God and receiving his loving gaze on you. Lord, I pray that more of our day would be directed to your service and praise. And we seek the grace to understand your perfect plan from creation to Christ's incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Joseph, the favorite son. One day, when Joseph was quite big, Jacob gave his favorite son a beautiful, long sleeve it's not long sleeved but <laughs> there's his coat 
a beautiful long sleeve coat. His brothers were jealous. They were very angry and couldn't say a kind word to Joseph. So as I'm reading this, I'm going to have you imagine yourself. So imagine yourself as Joseph. And you are the favorite son. Your father gives you this beautiful multicolored coat and you put it on. What does it feel like to put on this beautiful coat? How do you feel inside knowing that you are Jacob's favorite son? Think about that. And then see your brothers and see the anger on their face and hear their unkind words that they say to you. And then you have a dream and you tell your brothers, I dreamt we were all in the fields at harvest time. He told them, we were tying up the sheaves. My sheaf stood up and yours all came and bowed down to it. Ooh, how do you feel? What's your, how do you feel telling that dream? to your brothers and then see your brothers and their angry faces at you and hear them say you're too big for your boots you strut around in your fine new coat and think you can boss us about well then you say well my next dream's even better the sun and the moon and 11 stars came and bowed down to me. Think about, why did you say that to your brothers? And they got even madder about that. Because they were 11 brothers. And specifically, the dream was that 11 stars came and bowed down. And his mother and father were the moon and the star, the sun. So imagine your brothers being furious with you. And then even your dad scolding you when he overhears you telling this dream. But the old man often thought about his son's dreams and wondered whether they would come true. So sometime afterwards, Joseph's ten older brothers took their father's flocks of sheep and goats to new pastures. So imagine Joseph's um, ten older brothers out among the flocks of sheep and goats. And your father Jacob calls you to himself and says, go after them to take them food and see how they are. So you gather some food and you walk out to the new pastures that your brothers are at. And you put on your fine new coat before you go. So see yourself with that, that beautiful coat walking out to your brothers and you see them and they see you and they say, look, 
here comes the dreamer. Let's tear his coat off him and kill him. We'll tell our father a wild animal ate up his dear little Joseph. But the eldest brother, Reuben, says, No, we want no bloodshed. Don't kill the boy. Just teach him a lesson. He certainly needs one. But don't let's hurt him. Throw him in this empty well here. And the others agree. And so Joseph comes and says, Hello there, brothers. Never guessing what danger he was in. I have all this food. I've walked a long way and I've come with lots of food for you. And then the brothers crowd around you and tug at your coat. Hey, you say, stop it. Leave me alone. Father said, Father's a long way at home, they sneer. They tear off your coat and beat you up and push you down into an empty well. So imagine that, being in an empty well all alone. And you hear your brothers up at the top sipping, sitting down to enjoy the food that you have brought them. Then you hear a line of camels coming slowly toward them. You hear maybe bells. You hear people approaching with camels. And you hear your brothers say, traitors on their way to Egypt. Hmm. And then all of a sudden you feel your brothers tugging you out of the well and you protest. And then you hear the transaction with the traders. And there's 20 silver coins that are dropped into one of the traders' hands. You hear them clink, clink, clink. And you're tied up and led off to become a slave in Egypt. And then the brothers killed a goat and dipped Joseph's coat in its blood. They took it home and showed it to Jacob. Look what we've found. Do you recognize it? They asked. It's my son's coat, cried the old man. Some wild animal must have eaten him. He tore his clothes and no one could comfort Jacob. So that's Genesis 37, 1 through 28. So going over, Joseph is sold as a slave to Potiphar. But things go well for Joseph there and Potiphar is pleased with him and he puts it in charge of all of his affairs but then Potiphar's wife noticed handsome young Joseph and tried to tempt him even though he ran away she lies and says that the slave Joseph had attacked her. So they arrest you and put you in prison. And you're in prison for two years. But Pharaoh has two, some strange dream, dreams. And you interpret the dreams for Pharaoh. And because of that, you gain favor because you interpreted the dreams. And you also, when you interpret the dreams, you also help Pharaoh to be saved from the famine in the land. 
during the good years, he saves, and then a famine comes along the land, uh, on the land, and there's food for everyone. And then Joseph becomes the most important man in Egypt. And then there's the famine in the land during the bad years. And so Joseph's brothers come and then, this is many chapters, they find that Joseph, Joseph reveals himself. At first they don't know that Joseph is their brother. But then they find out and then they feel scared that that they because they tried you know they put him in a well and sold him and so they they feel horrible but they also feel like oh no when our father dies he's he's going to retaliate against us so i will read this part um, 15 through 21 in chapter 50 um, right straight from the new american standard bible when Joseph's brother saw that, brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father charged before he died, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, Please forgive, I beg you, the transgressions of your brothers and their sin, for they did you wrong. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in God's place. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comfort them, comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So you meant evil, but God meant it for good. So that... Um, the story of Joseph um, um, at the end of this time, just have a time. It's a long story, but also just know that that dream that Joseph had was fulfilled, basically. <laughs> it really did happen. So just to let you know that Joseph is a type of, of Christ. And type is defined as a preordained representative relationship which certain persons, events, and institutions of the Old Testament bear to corresponding persons, events, and institutions in the New. Joseph is an Old Testament person who has many characteristics uh, um, and life parallels to Jesus. Although there's no parallelism in the in the Word of God, these parallels parallelisms are noteworthy. So um, I'll just read something by Chuck Swindoll. It's from Joseph from Pit to Pinnacle. Actually, I was in Bible school when this was on the radio, and that was back hmm, late '80s. And so when I was in Bible school, I wrote. Um, I wrote a paper on Joseph and uh, just about his par the parallels between um, Joseph and Christ. But I'll read what um, Joe, uh, Chuck Swindoll wrote and sums it up well. Abstract truth seems sterile and difficult to grasp if it stands alone, but when we see it illustrated in a life, it's amazing how clearly it emerges and how attainable it becomes. This, of course, is the genius behind any biography. Joseph is a classic example. 
He embodies some of the most significant truth in all of scripture. Although a man just like us, Joseph blazes a new trail through a jungle of mistreatment, false accusations, undeserved punishment, and gross misunderstanding. He exemplifies forgiveness, freedom from bitterness, and an unbelievable, believably positive attitude toward those who had done him harm. From one episode to the next, you literally shake your head in amazement. That's the way it is when mere humanity incarnates divine truth. So that, um, so you can look at the, um, the characteristics that Joseph um, exemplifies of Christ. And um, there is uh, a wonderful article um, uh, that, um, that was in World Magazine. I think it was World Magazine. I'm going to look. It's called Forgiveness is Hard Work, The Things We Don't Do by Andre Sue. And it is a lovely article. Um, for, this is a highlight. Forgiveness is a brutal mathematical transaction done with fully engaged faculties. It's my pain instead of yours. I eat the debt. I absorb the misery. I wanted to dish out on you, and you go scot-free. And so the whole idea is that Jesus forgave, you know, Jesus forgive them for they know not what they do. So the type, um, Joseph forgiving his brothers is, and but for the higher purpose of God, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. So, um, the people who persecuted Jesus and hung him on a cross um, meant evil for him, but God meant it for good so that many people would be preserved alive. And maybe this is all obvious to you, and I don't need to say all this, but this is a harder story to get through because it's so long. But I encourage you to read. As you can see, we've had several stories in the book of Genesis um, the six stories in the book of Genesis. And Genesis is so foundational to understanding Jesus and the scarlet thread of redemption. So, I stumbled through that. <laughs> so, I encourage you to take your candle and have a wonderful talk with Jesus. I will link to that article on forgiveness. It's For me, it was life-changing to read that article. I read it many, many years ago, but it's, it's, it was life-changing. So I'll bring a link. It's toward the end it, uh, of the post. And also there is the uh, coat and um, questions that you might have for your kids if you were talking about the story of Joseph. And so be blessed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Be blessed. <laughs>